O Lord, how manifold are your works! In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Yonder is the sea, great and wide, creeping things innumerable are there, living things both small and great. There go the ships and Leviathan that you form to sport in it. Welcome to worship this morning. Uh, wherever you are, I hope you are warm. Uh, it's chilly here, but we're hoping most of this ice gets melted away uh, and we'll be able to get around a little easier. Um, blessings to you this day, this third Sunday after Epiphany. It's a great day to praise God. And I, I love that, that bit of the psalm. It says, uh, God created Leviathan. Leviathan that you formed to sport in it. That God just created something uh, for joy, for it to, to swim around in the sea. Uh, what a beautiful thing God has done, this gift of life to all of us. So uh, let's, let's praise that God today in spirit and in truth. Would you pray with me? New every morning is your love, great God of light, and all day long you are working for good in the world. Stir up in us desire to serve you, to live peacefully with our neighbors, and to devote each day to your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. I want to start with a, a hymn today, um, a wonderful hymn, O Spirit of the Living God. And, and this is a hymn that I knew, but I had not really paid much attention to the words. Get myself situated here. And, and I think there are beautiful words, um, especially uh, this third verse, teach us to utter living words of truth which all may hear, the language all may understand when love speaks loud and clear. Um, if we are the church, our lives here and out there are inspired by the Spirit, and our our prayer to God should be to, to be inspired by the Spirit, to proclaim love in all the places we go, wherever we find ourselves. So this is my, my attempt at this song.
till every age and race and clime shall blend their creeds in one, and earth shall form one family by whom thy will is done. Wow. So the scripture today comes from Luke chapter 4, verses 14 through 30. This is, this is Luke's account of Jesus uh, preaching in his hometown. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Holy Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. All spoke well of him and were amazed at the gracious words that came from his mouth. They said, Is not this Joseph's son? He said to them, Doubtless, you will quote to me this proverb, Doctor, cure yourself. And you will say, Do here also in your hometown the things that we have heard you did at Capernaum. And he said, Truly I tell you, no prophet is accepted in the prophet's hometown. But the truth is, there were many widows in Israel in the time of Elijah, when the heavens were shut up three years and six months, and there was a severe famine over all the land. Yet Elijah was sent to none of them except to a widow at Zarephath in Sidon. There were also many lepers in Israel at the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with rage. They got up, drove him out of the town, and led him to the bow of the hill on which their town was built, so that they might hurl him off the cliff. But he passed through the midst of them and went on his way. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. I try not to compare myself to Jesus all that often. Uh, it's a comparison that we all hopefully find ourselves losing. But I especially um, tend to put myself in his shoes in Scripture when he is preaching and teaching, uh, because that's how I not just uh, spend my time, but that is something I love to do and something that he has called me to. And so... Uh, when I sit here and talk to you, uh, that's, that's one way I can try to follow in his footsteps, even if there are plenty of others by which I fail. And so whenever I come to this scripture in its various forms in the Gospels, I always imagine myself in the, the pulpit in the church I grew up in. <laughs> I know it would be a surprise to many of you to see me in the pulpit at all. But uh, I have not had that opportunity. Some of you may remember during the pandemic, I offered online worship that we shared with um, the people at Grace United Methodist Church, where I grew up. But I've never actually preached there. I think I gave a be benediction once. Um, and it would be a very emotional thing for me, especially to remember uh, all the good memories there, all the, the people who have passed on, who really helped uh, support my growing up in, in the faith. Um, it would be sort of an overwhelming experience. But when I did offer that online message and when I have visited that church again, which has been uh, pretty infrequent, I am always struck, as I mentioned in that, that sermon two years ago now, that things have changed since I have been gone. I have not, what, I haven't been going really regularly to that church for for. Uh, 12 years. There's new people there. Some people have passed away and some people have also just left. And a lot of new people have come. They've been through 
uh, a couple different preachers now since I have been there regularly. They, they worship a little differently. They sing different songs and have different memories and different traditions even. Uh, they have a long-standing tradition now of a, of a Thanksgiving meal that they offer on Thanksgiving Day for anyone in town who doesn't have anywhere to go. That's a tradition there, but it's a tradition that started after I left. It's a different place. People with different memories. And so, so when people heard me speak, many of them didn't know me. And even those who did uh, knew me as a child, right? Now, I don't think Jesus has been gone from Nazareth quite as long as I have been gone from there. But everyone's done a lot of, of changing. Now, now uh, Almighty God in Trinity does not change. But Jesus, in his public presentation to the world, has, has expressed more fully who he has always been. He's gone out um, proclaiming to be the Son of God, uh, proclaiming that people should uh, repent and believe in his salvation, that he has come uh, to save sinners. Jesus has really become Jesus in the eyes of the world. And meanwhile, the people in his hometown are just hearing whispers. Did you hear what that Jesus is doing? Did you hear he said he was the Son of God? What about Joseph? And meanwhile, while Jesus is off preaching and gathering disciples and being baptized and all the things that happened before he arrives back in Nazareth, things have gone on in that synagogue. Maybe they've had different people teach. Maybe they've been through uh, some time in the lectionary or, or started a new uh, tradition in their synagogue. They've been through experiences together that Jesus was not there for. They've gone on with their lives. And so is Jesus, but he's out there and there in here. Some of you out there grew up here, and you've been blessed to spend your whole life here. What a wonderful thing. But just bring to mind for a moment all the things that have changed in this church in your lifetime. The walls are maybe a little less pink than they used to be, and maybe some of you remember before they were pink. Um, you know, the altar rail here used to go all the way across. Now we have an opening. And we can all bring to mind lots of pandemic changes. Imagine even, even two and a half years ago when I started here, if I saw myself uh, recording a video like this and putting it out and all the things we've adjusted to in the pandemic, a lot has changed. And, and we have had... Um, uh, Del McAdams, I know you're probably watching out there. Del grew up in this church um, and has since visited us several times, but has, has spent a good amount of his life not worshiping here. And so I'm sure when he stepped into the sanctuary, a lot felt different. But hopefully God felt the same. Now I wonder for those of you who maybe are from somewhere else, who have moved in your life, what it was like to go back home. Uh, for me, like I said, it strikes me that, that things change, um, but also that communities change. Um, people no longer go to the elementary school that I went to as a kindergartner in my hometown. And they've added on to the other schools to accommodate those students. So technically, I'm an alumnus of the same school as those kids, but we've had a whole different experience, plus all the technology they have since then. The town has different businesses, um, different leaders, different politicians, um, and different traditions. Things have changed. And so if I go back for some community event, I can claim to be from there, but my points of reference will all be different. There's a, uh, there's a stereotype I mostly started hearing in, uh, since I moved to North Carolina, but I'm sure it's true everywhere, that a, a, a kid will be raised, sometimes in the church or in a, a small town like this, and they'll go off to college, right? They'll go off to UNC, 
or, or God forbid, go to Duke. And they'll come back and they'll have changed, right? Maybe they'll have lost some of their values or they'll, um, I think the stereotype is they become more liberal. I'm not going to speak any more on that. But, but right, there's a sense, you, you send a kid off to college, especially at a place like UNC, uh, is the stereotype around here, I've heard, and they come back different, right? They come back maybe with different values or, or things like that. That's, that's the stereotype. I can't speak to the truth of that. But I think it's also true, along with whatever formation and learning and education happens when someone goes to college, that the experience of simply going off and living on your own changes people. They get the chance to be a new person, to represent themselves as an adult, um, to spend time with people who don't have memories of them as a child. When you, when you go to college or you, you move away for some time, it doesn't have to be college, you get the experience to just be yourself as you are now. And naturally, that might be different than the person you grew up as. And so when you come home, people say, oh, you're different. You've changed. But it's not just the person who's changed. It's the place that has changed without them. The tough thing about life is that we're all changing at different rates. Some of us are learning a lot and trying to change who we are. Some of us are happy with who we are and only change when uh, society or, or situations of our life determine it. We're all changing at different rates. We all have different experiences and different media. And that naturally produces conflict. When the kid comes home from college and they don't want to uh, pray around the table, that might cause some conflict. Or even when people have different experiences of school or are taught different narratives of history, it causes conflict. Look, you can look at Graham. That, uh, the controversy over the Confederate statue in Graham is people changing at different rates and being changed in different ways, right? So that there is conflict. And so when Jesus comes home, he has to contend with people who have heard rumors about him. And he has to contend with the person he has, has become. And he has to know that he doesn't totally know the community anymore. All this change is brushing up against each other. And so, of course, uh, people are confused. Of course, they end up conflicting. Just as in the Methodist church, People have read different sources and been exposed to different things, and so we have all these controversies within the church and across our worldwide church. These things change, and we change, and it's hard for, for individuals to wrap their minds around. But there is something that does not change that Jesus is able to bring to the people that is the same from when he was a child. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. The words of Scripture remain the same. The message of God of lifting up the lowly, of mercy for sinners, does not change. As people in Christ, we seek to be guided by the Spirit. We, we might talk in different ways depending on where we are. I would preach a, a slightly different sermon if I was preaching at Christ Church in Chapel Hill, right? Or at, at uh, Hayes Barton. Methodist, or if I was preaching in a Baptist church, or a Presbyterian church, or a church in Wisconsin, or a church in a, a large city. The message, the, the way I say the words might change, but the message must be the same. Jesus Christ came to save sinners. Came to bring good news to the poor. 
No matter how we change, how our world changes, how our families and church might change, the words of Scripture, the message of Christ, is something to hold on to. And I believe that when we are sensitive to the change happening around us, it is also a message that can be brought to every place at every time. Jesus Christ came to save sinners, including you and me, including the people who moved away from here, from, from here years ago and the people who have moved in in the past year. That message of Jesus Christ is eternal. Part of what the Holy Spirit does then is guide us to speak it to new times, to new places. Till perfected by thee, we reach creation's glorious goal. Amen. Would you pray with me? Almighty God, we know that you have made this a world of change where we continually grow either into your love or into the image of the world. And you have made a world that changes around us where things uh, are born and things die. People are born and people die. Lord, sometimes it feels like there is a tempest around us, a, a swirl of things changing uh, that we cannot reckon with or understand. Lord, we ask that we be anchored firmly to the message of Jesus Christ, but we also be given a clear vision of the world around us, that we might proclaim it in truth, that you might be glorified by all things in all places. We pray all this in Christ's blessed eternal name. Amen. Go in peace and uh, proclaim the message wherever you are.